Teacups, what's bro? Welcome back to the channel. So we are back with Chantel. I was considering, because I was making notes as I was watching today, but I was like, I'll maybe just react tomorrow because it's quite late. It's about quarter past 10. It does not stop me from making a coffee. But it's reasonably late, but you know how she is. If I had uh, waited, then I would have woken up tomorrow to like three rages, some kind of drunken nonsense, and she's offended an entire group of people. So I was like, all right, we'll do it now. Oh, I do really need to get a ring light in though because this ain't working. <laughs> I got weird shadows all over my face. We'll deal with it for now, I apologize. So we've actually got around three, I think it is, live streams today. Uh, we've got a short rage called Not One Pomegranate, You Liar. Uh, another stream called Not The Victim Card, uh, which clocked in around about three hours, man. I skipped through a little bit of it, I'm not gonna lie. And then there was uh, a short video called Creating a YouTube Account Tutorial for Repsian. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. For another YouTuber, we'll get into it. So what you really need to know before you go into these lives is that Foodie got outed by Dee Dee for trying to contact Nada, which was obviously a thing she said she wasn't doing and um, anyone with sense wouldn't do given all the history, but we are talking about Foodie. So uh, right after her plan, this seems to be the timeline as far as I can piece it together, but right after her plan for the new boyfriend fell to pieces, because self-respect has never been part of Chantel's strong suit, um, she tried to, I think it was text Dee Dee to get in contact with Nada. I, I don't know why you would do this. I don't know why she'd want to contact him to begin with other than it's her, but with everything, with all the water under the bridge with her and Dee Dee, why would you try and go through her? I'm guessing because she's blocked everywhere with Nada, but man, it's not a thing I would do. But that being said, as much as I don't understand it on a logical less bill because there is none, uh, there are parts of this that aren't a surprise. It's not shocking in the frame of reference from which we know Foodie with everything else she's said and done that she would go crawling back having been denied her alternative. You know, and this particular outing by Dee Dee led to uh, the other streams. So the Not One Pomegranate You Liar stream, sorry, I've got it on the, on the notes here, um, is just the same shit she's always mad about. Like, how, how do you go this long being mad about the same things? I don't understand. The only thing you really need to take away from it is that uh, no one is confused about the kind of person he is. And I get that she's mad at it. And I get that to an extent she even has reason to be mad about it. She had some things happen to her. But God damn, it's been a long time. And she really does need to start letting this shit go. How long can you be in like breakdown rage mode over this? Because currently we're at what? Nearly two years? I don't even know. And that's all you really need. There's nothing new in there particularly other than her admitting that she did in fact uh, try and try and contact him through DD. So then we move on to not the victim card. Uh, most of this comes from the first like hour, but there are a few points from later. Really weirdly, she starts the, uh, the stream with, I didn't call Nada. Why would I do that flop era? And I'm like, Excuse me, that's a very technical truth, which she specializes in. Why would I do that? Like, the audacity of it. You text Dee Dee, Dee Dee of all people, to try and get in contact with him, and then act shocked that people would suggest you might call him? I'm sorry for the confusion, clearly it was us. She still can't believe that he's saying he did nothing. And what about that is surprising? She also says that she doesn't really know what she wanted to say to him, which actually, <laughs> I'm not often fair to her. I try to be, but oh, my patience some days. But it's a fair statement, I think, because it's so bonkers that she would try and uh, contact him at all. What could you say in that situation? What conversation would you hope to have that would fix it somehow? Somebody asked if this was during or before her, what, 24 hour relationship? directly after I'm betting. If you remember when uh, the relationship was happening, <laughs> relationship was happening uh, between her and, is it Menton, whatever his name is, uh, she mentioned that she'd randomly, randomly, 
turned on her notifications and she was shocked to get one from Nada. And I'm sorry, you cannot convince me she was not scouring his channel for any mention of her name and of any sign of regret that she might now be taken, which is very much in the same vein of what would cause her to um, contact him after it all went wrong anyway, because of course she did, because she's her. She goes on for a bit making fun of Dee Dee and how pathetic she is and, and where's that mirror again, my darling, and asks if Nada really doesn't understand that she did nothing to him. And I'm so sick of this conversation, you've got no idea. No idea! Um, she tries to go through with... She says the reason she called him is because she misses the food and wanted to order some from him. Which is, I'm sure, the only thing she could come up with in her brain when she had publicly announced this new boyfriend and then ended, supposedly, the relationship within 24 hours and desperately needed to find a reason that didn't sound entirely crazy to be contacting her abusive ex again. And food is apparently the only explanation she could offer because the only thing she's crazier about than crazier about than Nada is the way she deals with food. It's a terrible reason, but here we are. I mean, it's either a stupid lie or a stupid truth. But a few seconds later, she says, I guess that wasn't the only reason, obviously. Trying to add an obviously, like we didn't just see through the line, she'd admitted it the whole time. Uh, she said she was driving all the way to this place. I think this place was uh, a new living situation she wanted to view. And she's getting angry, like, uh, at listening to the two of them, which is Nadra and Dee Dee. Uh, but that they're the stupid ones. And I'm like, they are the stupid ones. When you know they trigger you terribly and you're purposefully listening to them, seeking them out while driving angrily through the streets of wherever you went. I think it was Montreal. Like, really? They're the stupid ones for that. Uh, so apparently she went to see a house. Um, oh yeah, Montreal. She wants a condo in Montreal. I guess instead of the house, the house wasn't up to her standards. I don't know. Uh, somebody asks, why do you care if he blames you? And she says, because it's a slap in the face, again. And she won't move on. And I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, we can see that. And she was like, tell Dee Dee she's going to make her life hell. And then she's like, uh, legally. Because, you know, don't want to get too, too up on the threats there on YouTube because they take that shit seriously. Just ask Nada. But anyway, it's a weird moment that does just once again show how obsessive she is. And there's a very, very, I don't want to say teenage, because there's a lot of teenagers out there that work hard and are perfectly mature quite early. I feel like it's insulting to them. But to the stereotype of being a teenager, there's a lot in this live stream that just shows exactly where she froze in her emotional development. Because she's very much in this idea of, Oh, I do what I want. And I'm all for that as, a, as an independent person who lives her life in a way that isn't particularly traditional in some aspects. I do what I want and I get to choose. Yes, but I do what I want and I will stay stuck in this awful cycle forever and ever and ever just because you told me I shouldn't isn't quite where that is, you know? Uh, somebody mentions, and I completely agree, this whole live stream could have been dated six or seven months ago and all the talking points would have been the same. It would have been the same conversation. Uh, she Basically, she wishes things weren't true and he wasn't like that. And her chat, completely fairly, and I don't always agree with her chat, said, well, basically, he is and it is true, which is about where we are. Um, there's a little bit of talk about Sam's Bar Lounge, um, not in great detail, so I'll cover it quickly, but just saying that we saw her react to the video on Sam's Bar Lounge, so how can she now feel this way about Nada and the fact that she's still inexplicably, if not in love, very much wanting to be with him, in obsession or whatever it is she actually is. She has strong feelings and wants to be together with him, even though her reaction to the videos on Sam's Bar Lounge apparently show her to, to you know to sympathize but the way she confuses Dee Dee and Nada and kind of merges their personality despite those videos she hasn't shown much understanding to Dee Dee now Dee Dee is not a saint 
I used to think a little bit differently about Dee Dee, but the more active she becomes in being a participant on his channel, the less I, I have for her, to be completely honest. But it takes a lot. I saw like the preview of one video when this started, and when I realized what it was, I was like, and I've always said I'm very uncomfortable with those videos being out on YouTube and I, I have some serious side eye for the choices made there. But for me, even the preview was very, very difficult to listen to. And despite having some serious questions about Dee Dee's choices, I, I don't think I would react to Dee Dee in the way Chantel does. Now, clearly knowing Dee Dee as an entity on the internet, kind of a peripheral of a different channel that I dislike, versus the relationship that, that um, Chantel has had with her, we're gonna be in very different places with it, but Chantel has never let up on the hate she's had for Dee Dee. The only time she's shown anything other than that has been as a tool for sympathy or a tool of manipulation to get her out of the picture. Like when she was like, I will take you if you need to go because she would have literally done anything to get her out of there. So when she talks about her reaction to it, there is a visceral reaction to it that she seems to forget when actually speaking on Didi as a person. The chat says to her, well, you don't care about the video because it was someone else. So because it's removed from her own personal experience, she doesn't kind of view it in the same way, which I think is a fair comment. And then she says, actually, she cares more about the cheating than she does the abuse, which is an odd fucking thing. But at the same time, in a weird way, makes a lot of sense of what we know of Chantel. Because Chantel will take everything if she can just pretend. And the cheating makes it so she can't pretend in a way that the abuse doesn't. The abuse encourages the pretense because you're trying to hide stuff the cheating she just can't deal with. She gets told that narcs always play the victim and she says, well, I don't want him to be one of those. I'm mad at the reality and I can't face it, which is an honest statement. I'm not sure if she intended to be that honest, but there we were. This is kind of meandering through the chat a little bit because it's in between, you know, those kind of one word responses or readouts of the chat she does for a while. Uh, she says that I don't want to upset you guys, but I do always want to be honest because you know, she has shown herself to have such integrity over the years. Um, she's listing all the nice things she did and mentions, you know, we had COVID together. And I thought she claimed it came back negative, that it wasn't COVID. I mean, it must be her honesty rearing its head again. But hmm, I'm, I'm pretty sure at the time she said, no, 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 it's not COVID. It's been a while, I might have forgotten, but I feel like while she was putting this bullshit of, no, this is my second residence, was it that early or was it later? But they were sick, but she was like, no, it's not COVID. Someone in the chat decides to be sympathetic and say, well, you know, he was cruel. It makes sense you're hurt. And she says, yeah, like I'm an adult. I, I shouldn't be crying over this. And I'm not saying she shouldn't be. I think initially, yes, she, she went through something, whatever the details of it were. But this far along, like, dude, you gotta, you gotta move on. You gotta move on or this is your entire life forever. And I'm not sure which side of that she's gonna stay on, but I feel like this is her life forever now. The talk meanders for a little bit again. And uh, later someone is making fun of her top and how it's a grandmother top and she, she'd stolen it off, of, off uh, the commenter's grandma or whatever. And <laughs> in a moment, I don't often just straight up snort when she talks, but <laughs> she was like, I can sit in my bra if you want, to which I say, you know what? Touche, madam. <laughs> I don't want that. <laughs> so I like credit where it's due. It was quite funny. And again, she goes on um, a very non-teenage rant of, I do what I want and no mentor can tell me that I have to be careful of my drug intake because it's legal, baby, despite how damaging it clearly is to her. Then she goes like, what else can we say? They're fucking pathetic. And we're only 50 minutes in at this point and it's a three hour stream. Don't worry, I'm nearly finished covering it because a lot of it isn't worth covering. But clearly she thought of something for the next two hours, which is why I started skipping through. Uh, a few of the points that came up through the rest of it though. 
At some point, the chat gets bored and tells her she's going to have to pay them to listen. And she says, OK, let's change the subject. And there's more nothing talk and the topic does not change in any significant way. And if you were expecting it as part of Chantel's chat, well, then clearly you're new here. We move forward a little bit in time and she seriously, seriously asked her personal hug box why someone would want a yes man around them all the time in reference to how Dee Dee is always uh, deferential to Nada. And I was like, seriously, how many people has she banned? How many times has she tried to impose mega tears to cut down and cut down and cut down the people who can criticize her? Don't you dare, madam, this is something I will not take. She says that she never felt anything for Menton and she just wanted to shack up with him. And as I said before, her ability to tell the internet that she's in love and that someone is claiming her back online is more valuable to her than any relationship she might actually live. She wants to be part of a couple's channel. She doesn't really care about the quality of the relationship as a couple. And she does try to go back on this a little bit. She's like, well, I thought I was in love. I was like, dude, it was less than 24 hours and you've never met him. Like, that wasn't her motivation. At some point, yes, she wants a partner to prove that she can get a partner. And so she's not alone because I think she is desperately lonely at times between all this mess. She does want someone who just doesn't, I don't want to say doesn't care about the rest, but s someone who she can hold up as, look, this person loves me. Uh, the usual stuff tomorrow, she has to do housework. The, the place does seem to be piling up a lot. She says that she's not trolling with any of this, any of this being the topics of this whole live stream and the fact that she is back having the same conversation, trying to get in contact with Nada. And um, as much as her behavior is very trollish, I do think this is literally the inside of her brain at all times. I don't think she has the control of her emotions to be able to fake sustain this as consistently as she has because she's not able to consistently do anything on purpose. Um, she mentions there's a little bit of talk about moving and she says she has to move by November which was a little bit odd. It struck me as quite odd. She excuses it by saying, well, she just wants to. But I think it's very different from having to be gone by November. Because when she was thinking of moving before, she put it on a month by month lease. Um, because she finished and then they didn't resign for a huge amount of time. So she's paid the final month and she paid the first month. She did that when she moved in. So she's got the final month done. And then she's just paying rent as she goes. Now we're currently in September. So if she has to move by November, I guess pretty soon she's getting into that month's rent that she already paid for and she's got to get moving. But it did make me wonder what the push was to do it now. Because she's been saying for ages she was going to do it and this sounded more urgent and apparently she's actually going to view places. So there is some speculation on whether she's been evicted. Um, she reads someone super chats tell us about the eviction, which she reads, but then she doesn't answer and um, someone mentioned something about two months notice and she says, yep, that's how it works here. I think it's how it works for her particularly because she had paid, when you go in, you pay the first of the last month's rent. So if she gave her one month notice or was given one month notice, I guess she'd automatically have that already paid for month after the, the cost of the rent for this month ran out, after her rent ran out for the most recent one she paid. I realize I've chosen a convoluted way of saying that but that's what I think I don't think two months is standard across her part of Canada but I will maybe have to check with my friend to find that out um she has scheduled a viewing of two apartments in Montreal one is a one bed and one is a two bed so I'm guessing it's her deciding if she wants to live on her own and get an extra apartment for pizza or if she wants them to share uh again I've said it in the last few reacts, so I won't go into the major details again, but I don't know how she thinks she's affording this. Pizza's credit will only go so far. Yes, it got her into this apartment, but he's not employed anymore. So it's not like he's a great example of credit himself. And um, she has terrible credit, so she doesn't have much to fall back on. We then go into a short video of her bitching out this creator called Repsion, or that's how his name is spelt anyway, if I'm pronouncing it wrong, I apologize. 
at some point this creator who's quite large he's got like 700k subs something like that went on a bit of a tirade about Nader and was like, I am going to cover this guy, I'm going to research it, I am coming for him. Which you would think that Foodie would be happy about. But apparently he made a couple of comments about the fact that she platformed him, which is absolutely true, she did. And she is raged about the fact that he owes her everything because she platformed him and she took offence. So even though... She's been raging about Nata herself and she's wanted to win for, what, nigh on two years now? The guy who might actually help to show Nada for exactly who he is and, and perifer peripherate? No, that's, that's when you break off the paper. Polyf... Hmm, what word do I mean there? Spread out. There is a word that sounds a little bit similar that I'm not saying correctly. Whatever that word is. <laughs> I had to cut and I was like, I know this word. I'm giving up. It's late. There isn't enough coffee. You know what I mean. I'm sure many of you will correct me in the comments. But please pretend I said that word. But this guy, he could help to do that. He could help to spread the message in a way that she wants but kind of doesn't want. She kind of wants back together him. But wants. She wants the justice of it. And she's bitching this guy out and posting really sarcastic videos about, hey, it's not even one, two, three. It's a two-step system to just push a button to form a YouTube channel. And that is true. It's incredibly easy. But you're talking about a guy who didn't know how to switch on a live. He needed Foodie to do that. She encouraged him to get a channel because it was going to be income from him. So he'd take less income from her. And it was also going to be something they could do together so she could have the couple's channel she was dreaming of. This is where this dream began. And then um, she showed him how to do everything. She edited all his content. She physically turned on a camera for him when he needed it. And she encouraged her audience to go and watch him. So plenty of people are side-eyeing YouTube for the fact that he still has a channel given everything. But to sit there and go, blame YouTube for platforming him? There is enough blame to go around here, my darling. She was instrumental in making sure he had a platform, videos up, and an audience. And she continues to be the way she talks about him. Because she just won't let his channel die. So to sit there and be like, no, it's all YouTube. Nah, nah, nah. No one's hands are clean here. And that's where we are. I mean, I'd advise her to give a little bit less attitude about it, but it's Chantelle. She's not happy unless she's making the worst of all possible combinations of choices, which is really what we're seeing happen here. So thank you for joining me. I'm going to go piece this together and uh, I guess we'll see where the rage leads her because it always leads somewhere. Thanks so much for watching, everybody, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.